motion to approve them if there's no discussion. So moved. Second. There's a motion and a second. Lori, would you please pull the committee? Yes. 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 Motion passes. Thank you. And the next item on the agenda is the superintendent's report. Good evening, Dr. Gogan. Good evening, everyone. It's nice to see you. Um, for the general public that may be watching, we just had some wonderful building tours of our school buildings. I want to publicly thank our custodians for their hard work. There was a lot of movement this summer with cleaning classrooms and changing rooms for different people, and the buildings look spectacular. So uh, shout out to all of our hardworking custodians. Um, I'm going to begin my report with a personnel update, and as you can see, we have a full house here tonight. I would like to introduce some people to you. Some are new and some aren't, but I'm going to go down the line, and um, please feel free to say a few words about yourself. On the end, we have our new food service director, Kelsey Sanders. Kelsey, welcome to Webster. Kelsey's been doing a great job with um, getting on board and the summer work and the summer eats program. You can go ahead and say a few words. Thank you for having me tonight. I'm Kelsey. Again, I'm the new food service director, and you know I'm honored to be here with you guys. Um, slowly making my way into the district in my work. Yeah, our summer program went great this summer. We got a lot of involvement because you know students were allowed to, children in the community were actually allowed to eat on site instead of just grabbing meals and leaving. And I was just doing the numbers earlier today, and we had about a thousand more meals on average served than last year. So we had great participation. Um, we're getting going in the ropes of our farm to school with our school gardens, um, focusing on you know improving our menus. And I know I have big shoes to fill with Ellen Nylon. Um, she's great, and uh, a lot of our goals and visions and ideas line up together. So I look forward to working with you guys, working with the school, and continuing all the great things she started. Thank you. Welcome to Webster. We're so pleased to have you. And to Kelsey's left is Melissa Bergeron, our uh, dean over at Webster Middle School. How are you? I am uh, excited to be here for the opening of school this year. So um, getting off on the right foot and putting in some hours helping Heidi out and excited. Excited after the fifth grade we're in yesterday and seeing the parents and students. I'm just ready for this year, ready for it. And Principal Peterson. Good evening, everybody. Um, so I'm starting my third year as principal at Webster Middle School. Um, and I know all of you, so I won't say too much more. And not with us tonight is our new assistant principal, Mary DeCourcy, who you did meet on the building tour. She's coming to us um, with experience as being an assistant principal and a team chair. Um, and we welcome her as well. And now we have Annie Thompson, who's our dean at Park Avenue Elementary School, who I don't think has ever been to a school committee meeting. No, I certainly don't think sitting here. Well, welcome. Do you want to say a few words? Sure. So I'm looking forward to starting my second full year here at Park Ave. I joined COPSO here in January of 2021. Um, we have an action-packed um, school right now. Uh, lots of new people coming in, moving in. We had a great time here this morning with the beginning of the orientation, meeting some of the staff that I had not had an opportunity to meet during their hiring processes. So that was that was fun. So um, we are looking forward to a, a fast-paced, fun-filled, and very successful school year. Thank you, Annie. And I'm very pleased to introduce Amy Puliafico, who is our interim principal for Park Ave Elementary School. You may recall her name because she was our assistant principal, but Amy comes to us with uh, uh, years of experience um, as a principal and an assistant principal, and we're um, uh, blessed to have her step into this leadership role. I want to publicly thank both Amy and Annie um, as we have been looking for a a leader in that school for quite a while, and the two of them have been teaming and doing anything and everything to make sure that nothing fell apart there. So thank you very much for your teamwork. Amy, please say a few words. Uh, so yes, I'm Amy Puliafico. I'm going into my third week uh, <laughs> with Worcester Public Schools, and I think my third hour as the principal. <laughs> so I'm really, uh, really excited to be part of Park Elementary. It's a big school. Um, big staff, 
but a really important start to uh, the the schooling career of Webster kids. So I'm really thrilled to work with Annie, uh, work with the staff. I've heard some really great things, already seen some really great things. So I'm excited to keep and keep growing on that momentum with, with the staff. So and thank you, Dr. Gogan, for the kind words. Thank you. And it is my pleasure to introduce Ryan Renault, who is our interim dean at Bartlett High School. Some of you may not know, but Ryan likes the blues music. And uh, Ryan is a Bartlett grad. Um, first off, thank you. Uh, I'm excited for the school year and looking forward to this opportunity uh, in transition from 20 years being a teacher in the district to now more of a leadership role. Really looking forward to the school year. So Ryan joined us for some of our district summer summit. And one of the things that's really important about you coming out of a teacher role into a leadership role is that you're really going to help us make that connection with the teachers. And that's one of our focuses this year. You know, everybody has different perceptions about what's going on. So we're really looking forward to that value added um, and the collaboration and teamwork um, with you and the rest of our teachers. So thanks for joining the team. And it is my pleasure to introduce Mr. Ryan, uh, Mr. Ryan Collins, our new principal at Bartlett High School. Yes. Uh, good evening. Um, I am Ryan Collins and the proud principal at Bartlett High School. I have been on board since July 1. It has been quite an adventure so far, but one that I truly feel blessed to have had the opportunity to take on. The rich culture and commitment that lives here in Webster, but especially at Bartlett High School, is something that I want to capitalize on while moving forward with uh, great changes for the kids of Webster. As my colleague Amy just said, we are ready for that work to do the best by Webster children. And I am very excited to be here and love the um, team that I have started building. And it's been great. And I know that we're going to do great things with the support of everyone here. Thank you, Ryan. And last but not least, uh, I would like to introduce Gina Nieves as, as our assistant principal over at Bartlett High School, and Gina's also a Bartlett grad. Hi, I'm just looking forward to working with the new team and ready for the kids to come back. That's all I have right now. <laughs> well, this team has been doing some amazing work. Um, a lot of things happen in the summertime that no one sees. It's invisible work. Uh, teachers leave, they go on vacation. Kids leave, they go on vacation, and everybody's in fun mode. But that's when we really roll up our sleeves and we plan the year. We are sitting and planning the year. We're hiring new staff. We're making decisions. Um, uh, our instructional leadership team and our district leadership team have been working on a lot of fun things, and you're going to hear about that in my report a little bit. I do want to tell you about um, personnel. We've had um, a lot of new hires, and I've just mentioned some of them, but I'm going to mention some others. We have hired Clark Honeywell for the Bartlett High School biology position, Matthew Trana as the Bartlett High School STEM position, Arthur Duque as the Bartlett High School mathematics person, teacher, Suzanne Renaud as a para at Bartlett High School, Gretchen Tucker, grade 8 ELA teacher, Jean Derry as a special education teacher at Webster Middle School, Emma Paccio, the music teacher at Webster Middle School, John Reardon, grade 7 math, Eve Bachelor, Batch Halter, excuse me, at grade seven math. Natalia Martinez, the Webster Middle School guidance counselor. Renee Mosley, uh, the Webster Middle School building float sub. Madison Sullivan as a kindergarten teacher at Park Avenue. Barbara Giliotis as a grade three inclusion sped teacher. Jennifer McKinsky as a Park Avenue para. Nicole Morris as a Webster Middle School para, Jessica Hamilton as the Park Avenue building sub, Sierra Uris as an ABA at Park Avenue, Laura Laidley an ABA at Park Avenue. We've made many transfers, voluntary transfers from people within the district, and I think it's important that you um, see this, that people are given opportunities for growth in different areas. Uh, Sam Baudet has moved from the Webster Middle School to Bartlett High School in mathematics. Dane Labossiere has moved from history to business at Bartlett High School. Rob Sharmer has moved from Webster Middle School to Bartlett High School history. Courtney Stowicki has moved from Park Avenue to Bartlett High School life skills. Kirsten Lundstrom has moved from being a paraprofessional 
to an ABA at Park Avenue. Erin Tatro was our building sub. She is now our kindergarten teacher over at Park Avenue Elementary School. Liz Smara was our re-engagement specialist, and she's now a guidance counselor at Bartlett High School. Deb Zablocki has moved from Bartlett to Webster Middle School as an academic interventionist. Kelly Warner has moved from Bartlett High School to an academic interventionist at Webster Middle School. Um, we have hired instructional coaches at each of our buildings. Uh, we have hired them from within. Uh, there was a very rigorous uh, hiring process for these positions. These positions are instrumental in helping our teachers uh, take a look at their own practices in a safe, supportive way. So Jessica Barocas was the reading teacher over at Webster Middle School. She is going over to Bartlett High School to be the academic coach. Sarah Argentieri used to be an English teacher at Bartlett High School, and she's moving over to Webster Middle School as the academic coach. And Tara Gelino, Jelena is moving from grade two to Park Avenue as the academic coach. We have received several resignations from staff. Chris Shen has resigned. Christine Apostle has resigned. Kim Festa, who ran our 18 to 22 year old program, has resigned. Kristen Economo, our Park Ave special educator. Caitlin Hughes, Amanda Collins, and Colleen Suter um, have all resigned. We have received the announcement from um, Gil Parmley that he will be retiring effective September 9th. Um, and just a note, actually, he's going to be retiring sooner. He changed to August 27th, or he changed to an earlier date. Um, just a note that we had earlier announced that Jasmine Sales was going to be an ABA at Park Ave and Hannah Marks was going to be an ABA at Park Ave. Both have notified us that they would not be accepting positions. So there's a lot of movement right now in our district and a lot of other districts. We're not alone. I'm sure you've heard on the news how there's a shortage of teachers and a shortage of people who are willing to work in the field of education. With that, we do still have open positions. And I'm reading them because I'm hoping that people are watching. And um, one thing that's important for anyone who's watching, there are positions available in this district. So if you are interested in any of the positions, a paraprofessional position or a teaching position, we ask you please to contact us as soon as possible. Um, we are looking for a grade two teacher. And meanwhile, I do want you to know that interviews are going on for some of these positions. Some paraprofessionals, a special education inclusion positions, a kindergarten inclusion, and a grade three inclusion. We are looking for an ABA substantially separate teacher at Park Ave. There, the bilingual administrative assistant position that was a part-time school year position is still open at Park Avenue. Uh, Webster Middle School, uh, there, I don't think there's a grade eight social studies position still open because I think we just locked that up. Okay, okay. Reading specialist position is open at Webster Middle School. There's paraprofessional positions open. The non-teaching paraprofessional for the library is still open, and there is an open custodian position at Webster Middle School. Open at Bartlett is an ELA teacher, a special education teacher for Quest, the 18 to 22 program, a special, uh, I mean, an L teacher, some ABAs and paraprofessionals, and a building float sub. Um, I think our list, to be honest with you, is shorter than many other, other districts. So as, as much as everybody's sighing, I do think that um, we still have time. So keep the faith, and we will fill the positions. Um, I do want to give everyone credit for the, working really hard to um, do the interviews and, and be, um, have fidelity to our process. So thank you for your hard work in that. Um, we do have um, some interviews scheduled for our coordinator of uh, diversity, diversity, equity, and inclusion. On Thursday, we have three applicants coming in for that position. We are still looking for a school psychologist, um, and we, I will keep you posted on uh, new hires, as I always do. Any questions on personnel before I move on? Under instructional leadership updates, um, I, I want to say how much fun I think that I can say that we had, it's not fun to be in this room for a long amount of time, and we are often in this room for a long amount of time in our meetings, but I think we've met 
multiple times this year, July 6th, July 25th, the 16th, 17th, 18th, and 22nd, to really dig deeper on our district um, instructional priorities and, and really talking about the disconnect of what the priority is and what happens on a day-to-day -day basis. So I, I think we're making a concerted effort here to really restructure our uh, district priorities. Uh, and our priority this year is really going to be under the umbrella of sense of belonging. And under that umbrella of sense of belonging, there are going to be four buckets. And those four major buckets are things that we've talked about at the school committee forever. But we're really trying to simplify and, and be very poignant about what our action steps are. We're not creating the action steps in isolation. So the, let me tell you what the four buckets are and then the process that we're going to take before we identify what our action steps are going to be. The four buckets are creating safe learning environments. And in that first bucket, we know that um, positive behavioral learning environments falls into that. We know that having students in the classrooms is where they're supposed to be. We know that the magic happens in the classrooms. So the first bucket is creating safe learning environments. We have just done an RFP for PBIS work. Uh, we intend to have PBIS functioning teams at each of our schools this year. Um, so you'll be hearing a lot about that throughout the year. The second bucket is um, our instructional priority is to create a sense of belonging and engage all students through on or grade above grade level learning experiences where students are doing the majority of the thinking and have access to as needed scaffolds um, to support their learning. So having students doing the majority of the thinking is, is what we want to see in all classrooms. We want them to be involved in hands-on learning. We want them to be able to explain what they're learning. And we know that we can't get to that unless we have safe learning environments in the classrooms. The third bucket has to do with making sure that we are really paying attention to culturally responsive practices in all the classrooms and in all the schools, and that we're building this sense of pride, celebrating diversity. And our fourth bucket, and equally important, is that two-way communication with families. We know that all the research will tell you that if Families, students do better when families are engaged with their education. And it is our obligation as educators to continually get and try to get parents involved and um, really paying attention to that two-way communication. So those four buckets are our outline. We met with our ILTs and DLT on um, one of our summer summit days, and we started to sort of tear that apart. What does that mean? And we're really looking for people to pitch in. What does that mean to you? What does safe learning environments look like, feel like? And so we're going to be collecting um, information from teachers and staff through the uh, administrative teams in the buildings with the ILT teams. We are also going to be surveying parents and students on what does that mean before we come up with what our action steps are. Our action steps are going to be placed in a district um, improvement plan and in the school improvement plans. All of this work under the sense of belonging, um, we're obligated to do this, not just because it will help clarify the actions and the responsibilities of what everyone has to do, but it's going to put the focus back on, on the classroom. And I'm coining it. The magic happens in the classroom. Every single one of us is here to help students learn. And we are going to continually build out from those classrooms. What does it look like? And it's not a top down. The district has provided resources and, and curriculum. We're not dictating to teachers to turn the page or, or to do this worksheet at this time. We are really going to try to break down those barriers, because there are some barriers, to recreate that sense of creativity in our teachers and that innovation in our teachers. And I think that our work as the DLT and ILT, and please feel free to jump in, um, was invigorating this year because people were excited about the work. We did bring in some professional development around um, impact projects and really digging deeper to have everybody reframe why they're doing what they're doing, to dig 
deeper themselves to be reflective about their practice. So um, I'm kind of trying to give you a little bit of a summary. That's um, some of the district instructional leadership work that we've been doing. You're going to hear a lot more about it um, as the year progresses. Any questions on that before I move on? Any comments from the um, team? OK. Um, I do want to let you know that the Department of Elementary and Secondary Education um, voted to increase the scaled score of MCAS starting with the class of 2026. The ELA score will go from 472 to 486. The math scale score will remain 486. And um, it will increase for um, science and technology to 470 from 486. The DESE board voted to increase the ELA math score, scaled scores to 500, starting with the class of 2031. I'm sure there'll be lots more information from DESE on that, um, just let, putting that out there now. Um, we um, have a very short presentation in your um, packets to give you a quick summary on the MCAS results. And we can just show it really quickly. I just wanted to give you a, uh, a quick oversight. Ryan, can you just shut one of the lights? That. This is a, just a quick visual. So we're the red line, and the green line is the state. So as you can see, that's grade three. We are just uh, underneath the state. We can just kind of go through quickly. I just wanted them to see the visual. We're the red line. That's the green line. Dr. Gogan, what is from left to right here? I think it's the item. It's the, yeah, it's the item, it's the, the item number in question. Okay. So when the principals and the ILTs and the teachers dig deeper, and we're, we're going to do another presentation once they are able to process this, they'll be able to look at the questions to see what exactly didn't we teach or what exactly the students didn't understand so that we can um, sort of put an, an MCAS action plan together. But what I wanted you to see very quickly was just that we're right underneath the state. And if you just go through very quickly, grade five, grade six, grade seven, grade eight, Grade 10, and math. And this is just a quick snapshot. Again, the, the, uh, it does take time to process the results, and our staff have not been here, and you know, we're, we'll need some time to do that with our staff. Grade 4, grade 5, math, grade 6. Grade 7, grade 8, grade 10. So just a quick snapshot on that so that um, you were able to see that. In terms of um, safety, uh, we had a district safety meeting on July 20th to really outline a safety preparedness plan for the school year. Um, we've been working with the Webster Police, and we are, as you know, in Alice uh, District. Uh, we have, uh, you know, we're back to normal. We have put in our calendar um, the safety drills that we need to, fire drills, lockdowns, evacuation drills. Our principals will be communicating with families around those, but they are scheduled out with the Webster Police. We are starting off our district year with safety. Um, I think it's the number one priority for schools. You can't get to learning unless you're a safe school. Uh, our district opening day, we will um, be having a complete uh, overview on Alice. Uh, Dan Melhouse, our new SRO, and Tim Whiting, and Monique and I are all uh, Alice certified, and the Webster Police will bring a team in here. Um, and we will be doing active drills with our adult population each afternoon. So um, we will be... Uh, learning a lot through those drills. Um, we will not be doing those type of drills with students. We will be doing evacuation drills and lockdown drills with students and fire drills. Um, we will not 
probably get to doing active ALICE drills with our students this year. So um, all that will be communicated with families and we will be doing age appropriate drills at all of our schools. Um, I'm pleased to say that we have a full blown plan for the year um, and um, we're excited about that. And we're excited to work with our, um, our new SRO who was here today at the new teacher orientation with um, Detective Whiting to go over um, some of the ALICE training uh, with our new staff. I'm pleased to let you know that the adult education program has been awarded uh, 411342 for FY 2023. They're in the process of putting together the competitive grant for the next three years. Um, I will say that they started off with their pilot of summer school this year and it was successful for the students who stayed in the program. So we're pleased about that. You'll hear more about that at a later meeting. Um, I did do a lot of talking and I'm talking fast, so if I'm talking too fast, just somebody give me a clue. I'm trying for us not to be here too long tonight. Um, but that district instructional priority that I talked about under the umbrella of sense of belonging is important for a couple of reasons. Not only does it help us clarify communication with what our objectives are for the year, um, it's something that we're obligated to do to give to the Department of Education, especially for the Webster Middle School and Bartlett High School. They are underperforming schools. We have to um, present our school improvement plans and our work around that. So we submitted our um, prioritization on August 19th. The DESE has really changed its format, which I'm pretty pleased about, because it's, um, they understand this work is ongoing and gets tweaked as you're doing it. Uh, we still will be working with our statewide system of support team. They've been instrumental in the work that we've been doing. And new this year, we are not um, going to be, we still have the GLEAM grant. We are not going to be using Hill, uh, who were our consultants last year under GLEAM, and then we hired them to be coaches for the teachers for the ELA program. We have gone out for an R, we put an RFP out um, for coaches of the instructional coaches in the building and for the um, building leadership teams and the ILT teams. So we're really trying to build a distributive leadership team here. It's building capacity amongst the people in the buildings. So we're, we've just put an RFP out for that. Um, so we're hoping um, to uh, give you that information at the next meeting who got that bid. We will be working with TNTP through Gleam. They are a different company um, to help us with the Gleam work. So um, I wanted to let you know that. Um, Bartlett High School, and some of this may be repetitive because I email you updates, but um, for anyone who's watching, I think it's important um, for them to know that Bartlett High School was awarded the, capital, the Skills Capital Grant in the amount of $146,000 to support the two innovative pathways. Um, and th that material will be used for um, building up and beefing up that program. Under management and operations, uh, we have had several uh, meetings around the Bartlett renovation project. Uh, an important meeting we had on July 25th with um, Mr. Collins and Ms. Nieves and our OPM and designer and Ms. Perangeli and myself was really to get um, them up to speed on what the timeline is going to be looking like. We are going to be scheduling lots of meetings with department heads um, to do some design work with them. I'm not going to talk about the school building committee meetings. I'll leave that there. Um, we have received grant allocations for FY23 for our titles. As you can see in your um, notes, we have uh, an increase in all areas. And um, under family and community engagement, there have been several newsletters that have gone out. Uh, I do want to let you know that uh, Miss Victoria Spitz, a uh, Bartlett High School student, has been selected as the school committee representative. She's very excited about um, joining our team. Um, she will be at the next school committee because she's still enjoying summer. And we wanted her to enjoy summer. Oh, yes.
kitchens for our parents. We're able to give out some of the free resources from the Wonders program. So we're looking as a team to that outreach. And one, two last things. No, three. Oh, no, four. OK. Um, I think family engagement is a really important thing that we are going to be working on in one of those buckets that I talked to you about. And um, that's everyone's responsibility. I'm going to start the, the new year off asking all teachers to, uh, in the first two weeks of schools, to really to do that phone call to all to kids so that we are building that partnership well before um, an event happens. Um, and we are really encouraging parents to come in. Um, to be part of the school. I, you know, I, in my newsletter, there's ways for people to volunteer. It doesn't have to be on a weekly basis. It can be once in a blue moon. But there's useful things that we can learn from parents when they come into our schools. So uh, I want to encourage that um, process and remind families that if they're interested in coming in, they just have to work with their principals and come to the central office to fill out a Cori background check. Uh, I do want to let the school committee know that the state has authorized to have remote meetings until March 31st, 2023, um, and the district opening days agendas, um, which are being tweaked, are in your packet, but those are the frameworks, um, so you can see how busy we are. Um, and then for the general public to please save the date for open houses. Uh, September 15th for Webster Middle School, 6 to 8. September 22nd for Bartlett High School, from 6 to 8, and September 29th for Park Avenue from 6 to 8. I also have an update on sports. I was hoping that Athletic Director Mr. Peranto was here. I do want to just give you a brief update that the Bartlett High School Co-op for with Southbridge for girls and boys soccer is in effect. I've been informed that new uniforms were ordered, and the costs for both the uniforms and the transportation will be split with Southbridge. Uh, there are mandatory athletic meetings, and we discussed this last year. We want separate meetings. We want one for the Webster Middle School and one for um, Bartlett. The September 1st is for Bartlett at 6 p.m. for the mandatory athletic meeting, and September 8th is for Webster Middle School at 6 p.m. And that concludes my report. And that was a mouthful. Thank you, Dr. Gogan. Are there any questions or comments from the committee? Through the chair. Ms. Millett. Um, in regard to safety, I hope we're still considering putting up some signs about the use of school grounds while school is in session, because I think it's very important that we do that since we had some instances last year um, of other people using the school grounds during school session, and I think it's very important due to for safety. I, I think that's a school committee decision, to be honest with you. I, I know that I have heard of different situations that have happened, but I know on a an average day here, people do walk their dogs out back. Um, and given that the community has just supported a very large project, I would not be doing that without the school committee asking me to do that. Um, I think that's a school committee discussion. I think it's, um, it's, it's a, there's a fine line. Um, I, I certainly, as our administrators are sitting here, if there are situations that occur in your day and there is an outside person who's interfering with whether that's recess or uh, students or teachers, that needs to be reported immediately to you. You need to express that to your staff, and then you need to report it to me so that we can track those incidents and then deal with those people individually. Um, I, I, I'm a little hesitant, given that um, the community has supported the project. I just want to be careful about that line of... Um, I know there's a project, but this is safety. Yep. Other schools in the area have those regulations posted. They have posted that there's video surveillance. And I think in this day and age of 
craziness, let's face it. And I think it's wonderful that the community has supported that, but this is still under safety. It's a safety issue. I was going to get some signs put on the courts and stuff to say that that video surveillance and sites were being monitored. Um, but the grounds are active on the fields and the track during the day. We do see a lot of people come and walk the track mm -hmm. uh, during the day out there. I haven't seen as much issues. I know occasionally we have people out on the basketball courts or much in front of the high school. Um, but we're always happy to address any up sure but haven't known it to be a major or, or bigger problem um, but I am I do intend to get signs about posting because it's not just you people are coming in their mess I mean even when we locked even when we had them locked quickly during COVID that nobody could go in and use them we were shutting off they were still breaking in breaking the fence going in and messes barrel not um, cleaned up and stuff like that. So, I can certainly see the basketball court as an area that's completely off limits during the day. Uh, my my concern is, yeah, definitely yeah. that. But my concern is that there are people that just go by and walk their dogs. Absolutely. Yeah. And I'm not saying every it should be closed down for for everyone, but I think there needs to be some kind of sign that even says if the school is using these areas, that's like preference. Yeah, right. Mm -hmm. I'm I not agree with you about to the basketball. Close course. them down to the community at all. I know when we do the Bartlett High School project as well, our video surveillance around the school is going to improve. Um, and I'm sure that the um, Webster Middle School courts are going to be in that line of view. So it might be worthwhile just to gather some information at the beginning of the school year to see if there's any interference from folks from the community on school grounds that inhibits our ability to use the grounds. And then at that point, we can put that as an agenda item and have further discussion about it. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Ms. Millett. Any other comments or questions from the committee? Uh, just for me, um, I know that we're going to unpack the uh, MCAS results at a later date. It'll be interesting to know, you know, there's a delta, right, between Webster Public Schools and the state, whether that delta is staying the same or getting bigger or smaller, just food for thought as we move into unpacking things. Uh, the next item on the agenda is the business manager report. Good evening, Mrs. Perangeli. Good evening. Nice to see everybody. Um, my first item is building committee update. We did have a building committee on Tuesday, August 16th. Um, we also, prior to that, had two separate meetings. We had a maintenance meeting at 4.30, uh, 4, and then an athletic meeting at 5. Those are smaller groups um, that we are getting a high-level overview of what maintenance might be in the building, uh, uh, an outline of the parking lots, how things are going to look at a high level. It was just the initial first meeting to kind of look at the plans and just get a little feedback on areas that we think. Um, they're going to be a lot more. We're going to be doing that in a lot more detail um, with the high school and with the department heads, um, looking at all the different departments, art, um, music, PE, um, biology, all of the different uh, categories and going through and saying this is what a classroom is going to look like. This is how they're going to learn about is there anything we differently or anything we'd like to see. Um, how does the flow of traffic work around the building? So we're starting to have those discussions, which is um, pretty exciting. It is exciting. It was, it was exciting and fun um, to take a look and try and envision what the building is going to look like. Um, and then we went into our building committee at 6 o'clock. Um, they gave a high-level um, overview again. Uh, they are starting to get more consultants in. Um, as we move through the project and do more testing, soil testing, looking at the grounds, um, and really starting to get into some detail now as we move th forward. We're going to have about a year of this kind of work, planning, so we don't anticipate um, breaking ground until a year from now. Um, there's a lot of work to be done between now and then. Um, we also have to send in uh, multiple submissions to the MSBA 
Our first one, I believe, is due in October, October right? Yep. October, I think, 23rd, maybe? Uh, don't hold me to that date, but I know it's in October. And um, we start getting um, cost estimates. There'll be two or three more cost estimates, because as we know, everything is going up. So this is going to give us a good idea on how the project's moving and what we can expect, and if we are going to need to do any type of value engineering down the road. So they're looking at all aspects now. We're getting prepped for our first submission in October. Um, we have a great team. The building committee is um, actively involved, and we have a great um, OPM and architect, um, and really it is a pleasure um, working with them, and it's a very exciting process. Uh, so right now we're still meeting once a month. Our next meeting is going to be September 18th, I believe. Um, and um, we're just, we're just, it's, the work is just fun right now. Um, ask me in a year if it's going to be fun as we're talking colors and little things and trying to match stuff up. But right now it's just, as much as they're learning from us, we're learning from them because the ideas that they come up with when they're just talking about the building and the flow is very exciting. Um, so that concludes my report on the building committee. Questions about that? No? Great. Um, next item I have is a maintenance update. As you stated, we were able to walk through our buildings and um, you wouldn't know it uh, that the buildings, uh, as good as they look, the custodians have been working extremely hard, and it has been a very, very difficult summer for them. They've been a lot of short staff. There's been a lot of moves throughout the building, and on top of that, they're trying to take care of certain grounds where they are. They're also fixing and repairing things, um, but I think you could tell about the amount of pride our guys have for the buildings and how well um, maintained they take care of them. Um, with that being said, doesn't mean we haven't had a few bumps over the road over the summer. Um, and I'll just go through building by building because this is going to be a normal part of my report, just talking about what's going on in our building so the community understands um, what we're fixing, what kind of troubles we're running into. And it also helps us planning down the road as we're looking to prepare for our next year's budget. Um, at the high school, we have had some ongoing roof repairs. Uh, the roofer has been here a couple times. So, uh, we had a little bit of rain not too long ago, and we noticed another leak pop up, so they came back and repaired um, another section. And we walked through today. We only saw one leak walking through tonight, so um, we'll call them and we'll have them come back and take a look at that. Um, I'm not sure if you noticed. It is a little warm in here right now, so there is a issue with our... Um, air handler here, so they haven't fixed it yet. They've been out, they looked at it once, they tweaked it a little bit, cleaned it, and uh, it's still not working, so we're calling them back again. Um, we have also, um, I've also updated you about the um, kitchen equipment that is no longer working at the high school. Um, it has been disconnected, uh, and the plumber came in and capped that off. They've moved it out. Um, we are brought over a kettle from the middle school. The middle school does not use their kettle, and it's uh, pretty much brand new. So it was disconnected over there to come over here for the start of school to help the kitchen here. Uh, we did purchase um, combi ovens, um, but they are going to be in in about 12 weeks. Um, so it's going to be some time, but we can operate our kitchens with the kettle and the um, one combi that we have, steamer. So we will be in shape there. Um, the guys did a lot of moves over here at the high school, um, getting things organized. A couple of the rooms that we used to use here for storage are now going to be used from labs, so they had to completely empty out those rooms, um, get them cleaned up and get them ready. We've ordered some new furniture for the new program, um, so the teacher's excited. He's, we're ready to get rolling, so um, that's really exciting to get a new program for our students off the ground. As we were walking tonight um, through the building, our custodian, Al, said to me, um, this new program is going to be really cool. He's going to do this, this, and this. And so that level of excitement is what we really want with the kids. But now the adults, are it's contagious. Mm -hmm. So um, I think we're going to see some great things. Yep. And the teacher came in with, you know, just a great amount of excitement. So when he talks about it, you just feel excited about mm -hmm. the class and the program. 
and um, he's just he's set the room up room up wonderfully. So we're ready for that. We're ready for the school year to start. Um, we've also been having our inspections going through. So the high school yesterday did the fire um, inspections. Uh, we did our eye wash stations. We have to do those in our labs. Um, at the other schools, I'll jump over to middle school. They were being tested today. I believe they completed them today. Uh, fire alarm and sprinkler testings. They had the eye wash temp testing done. We had the hoods cleaned in the kitchens. Um, the AC kicked off a couple times, so we had the HVAC technicians come in. They cleaned all the coils just because everything has been so dry with everything in the fall and they're getting dirty really fast. So we had everything cleaned and David went through all the classrooms and replaced all the filters in every unit vent. Um, and then they replaced the rooftop twice a year. So we're all on board with that. Um, I wanna thank the town, Mr. Kenny Pizzetti, um, the highway department, they came over and we had some large pot ho potholes um, behind the middle school and around. So they went around and they filled the potholes for us. Um, Kenny's always great whenever I give him a call. Um, he is always happy to help maybe after a little complaining sometimes, but he's always happy to help. <laughs> um, uh, you could see at the middle school that um, we've walked in the library that has been used as a cafeteria for the past two years. Um, that was emptied and cleaned. We had the carpet shampooed, so um, not to say the kids are a little messy, but when you have uh, 100 kids or 75 kids eating on a carpeted floor, it's bound to have spills and dirt and stuff. So. Um, it was uh, professionally cleaned and it looks great. So our libraries are being used for libraries again, which we're really excited about. Um, and they again had a lot of changes um, of rooms um, through the middle school. And then with the town also came in and did a project out in the um, driveway. They are, you've probably seen them through town. They are going in and they are um, lining the sewer lines. Uh, we also have some lines that come down our driveway. So they cut a hole at the end of our driveway and uh, blew the lines in and cleaned that out. So hopefully we're done there uh, and that should be all set. Um, we've done some work at our middle school in our garage. The garage door was all rotted out. Um, the building 2005, it opened, so things are happening. So we did have that repaired and had some damaged walls repaired inside the middle school. Um, that's all done. Uh, we had some, it, I think it's the month of water leaks um, because I've had water leaks at every building. Um, I forgot to mention the one here at the high school, but it's a theme this month. Every building had a leak in their building. So um, at the middle school, we had a leak and they were all within the walls, a leak within the wall um, from the second floor to the uh, sixth grade walls in the bathrooms and it was between, so they had to cut out some holes to find the leak where they saw it and trace it back. Um, those have all been fixed and repaired. They also fixed the leaks here and repaired and actually installed a couple shutoffs. Friday, the, the age of this building, the only way they could fix the leaks was to shut water off to the whole building. So we had no water here on Friday afternoon for about two and a half hours while they repaired the leaks. But then they also installed a couple shutoffs in the kitchen. So if we have an issue again, we won't have to do that. Um, so we're being a little proactive there. And then at Park Ave, um, things are looking pretty good over at Park Ave. The building looks awesome. Um, we did have a leak there. And it, again, was in the walls that we had to get into the walls and cut some holes in the walls to find the leak and repair it. But they did do that. Um, we also had, when we walked through, you noticed we had a rooftop unit um, that had the drain plugged, so it didn't drain and it spilled over through the ceiling into the um, cafeteria hallway there, stairwell. So that has been fixed. They fixed the rooftop unit, but now we've got to figure out a way to replace those tiles. It's not an easy spot to get to. So I'm gonna have to call somebody in for that. Um, I also met with an engineer today over at Park App because we have a couple of spots in the playground area where the ground underneath is coming out. Um, we had the highway come over once and backfill that and put some more soil in there and it's come out again. So we're thinking there's some issues with underground, um, maybe drainage. So I called the um, town engineer and asked him to come over. We walked it a little bit, take, took a look at the, both the playgrounds. He doesn't think there's a safety issue for kids at all, um, but he 
he is going to look into the drainage over there and see what we didn't want to start cutting or digging anything up because those are expensive playgrounds and I'm, we're sure that um, you know just putting soil in there is not going to fix the problem we want to fix it appropriately in the right way so he's going to come back with some feedback for us um, on how to fix those um, playgrounds because there's two different playgrounds where we had some issues um, but we are it has been a very, very busy summer. The guys are working really hard, and I can't thank them enough um, for their hard work um, in all the buildings. And it's just not the custodians. I've, I also wanted to kind of give um, a technology report as part of my maintenance because technology is also um, working crazy over the summer. I mean, all the rooms get emptied. That includes all the technology. Um, so everything gets put out of the rooms, everything gets wiped clean. Um, I asked my um, IT manager, John O'Neill, to uh, bullet a list for me to give you some updates, and, and this is what I got, two pages <laughs> of <laughs> I'm not going to read it all. <laughs> He's very thorough. Um, but they've been doing a lot of work on the Chromebooks. Um, they pull all the Chromebooks out of the rooms at Park Ave. Um, they clean them, they look for damage, they repair them, they put them all in. Um, they set, they bring, uh, you get new Chromebooks when you go in for grades five and grades nine. So they get those all set up. They clean whatever else they have that's been returned and wiped clean. They're also doing that with staffing computers. They make sure there's no damage, they clean. Um, they are also doing um, server work, any kind of behind the scenes work, making sure our information is secure, um, organizing server racks and wire racks um, so you know it's a huge team effort over the summer and they're all working really hard and you know I have one of the guys sitting behind the door and I don't think I say it enough or I don't see him enough to say thank you um, but they they do a lot of work they sure um, getting, do making sure that when our kids and our faculty come in on day one it's a pretty seamless transition for them to come in and just start working and be here um, and there's a lot that go in that goes into making that happy. So I, I happen. I just wanted to say thank you to them, um, give them a shout out because they really deserve it. Do you have any questions about the maintenance? No, I, I guess just an observation. Um, Mrs. Prangley was nice enough to give us a tour over the summer. A couple of community members that had graduated from Bartlett and heard a lot about the project. When we walked through, the classrooms were empty. I mean, everything from all of the classrooms was in the hallway, and the classrooms were in the process of being clean. I, I had no idea the level of cleaning that goes on in all of the buildings over the summertime. So big shout out to all of the staff. I personally observed it at Bartlett, but I'm sure it happened at all of the schools. So amazing work. Thank you. Okay, moving on. Uh, FY22 budget update. I was hoping to have a final budget for you tonight. Um, I did not get that done. Uh, we are pretty much closed out. It's just neating, neatening it, the budget up and making it look pretty for you guys to look at. Um, we have approximately $143,000 left um, out of the school budget, out of the $22,456,864 um, that likely will be going back to the town. I don't anticipate any other adjustments being done unless we get an old straggler bill in that I need to encumber real quickly. Um, but we've tried to go through everything else. So we are pretty much there and done. Um, you will have a clean budget at your next meeting to look at, and I'll go into it a little more details where and show you where we've had some savings and where we've had to spend a little more. But um, you will have that. And it, it looks like we will be giving money back to the town in the amount of about $140,000. Questions? And then the last item I have is transportation. Um, it's that time of year. Uh, transportation lists are posted on the website. Um, we are doing bus passes again. Um, our policy is that Webster Middle School and the high school, anybody under a mile and a half is a walker. Anybody over is a bus student. Um, we bus all of Park Ave, um, K through four. Um, lists have been created and students have been assigned and I know secretaries are printing out bus lists, uh, bus passes. 
we'll distribute them the first week of school typically. We're not gonna deny anybody a bus ride the first week of school. We allow everybody on and off um, who think they're a transportation student. And then as we go through and hand out the buses, bus passes and make sure we work out um, any logistics and mileage or anything like that um, before we start having any conversations. But um, I do get calls, I do get calls from parents. Um, if they have any questions or concerns, um, just pick up the phone. My phone number's on the website, my, e my email address is there in the transportation section and we will work through and assist anybody we can. Um, I do wanna just make sure people are mindful that there's a lot of construction going on in town. Um, I know there's gonna be an impact to the Lake Street area um, and I'm trying to get a little more detail from the project manager to have an idea to notify parents, are they shutting down? Um, in the past, I've worked with projects where uh, they'll actually stop their construction while the bus was moving and then pick up. So if I can, but I haven't um, had that conversation with them yet. I've worked with the water um, commissioner and trying to get an idea of um, what their schedule looks like. So they're gonna include me in their next meeting. Um, he is also concerned about it. So I want people to be patient. It's already challenging the first week of school, you know, with new people. Um, we are fortunate that we don't have any new drivers. Uh, we have the same staff that we had last year, which That's is good. fantastic. Um, but you know, with anything, you're having new kids coming in and out, and it's always a little slow with that first week. And then you add, construction on top of that. So um, just be mindful and if you have concerns or questions, give us a call. And if you don't get a bus pass and you think you should be a transfer, um, transported to school, just give us a call and we'll work through that with you. And that's all I got for you guys. Thanks for your updates, Mrs. Prangeli. Thank you. Any questions or comments from the committee? Hearing none, we'll uh, move on. Our next item on the agenda under new business is the approval of the employee handbook. Okay, thank okay. you. Um, we have an employee handbook every year that we give out to our employees. Um, we have updated the names, we have eliminated the notification of arrests, and we have eliminated COVID-19 procedures. Any questions or comments from the committee? Hearing none, I will entertain a motion to approve the changes to the employee handbook as presented. So moved. Second. There's a motion and a second. Lori, would you pull the committee, please? Yes. 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 Yes, the motion passes. Thank you. The next item on the agenda is the approval of the, of the substitute handbook. And our substitute handbook is an annual handbook that we put together. Our current pay rates for substitute teachers are $100 a day. The current pay rate for a long-term substitute is $135 a day with a bachelor's degree. Our rate for permanent substitutes um, are, is at a bachelor's one in, according to the uh, teacher's contract. Our substitute pay for nurses is $150 a day. Our pay for paraprofessionals and ABA substitutes is $85 a day. Our pay for administrative assistance substitutes is $14 a day, 14 an hour, not a day. That's an error. Uh, the rate for cafeteria substitutes is 14 an hour. And the rate for custodial substitutes uh, is 75% of the shift rate. Thank you, Dr. Gogan. Any yes. questions or comments from the committee about uh, the changes to the substitute handbook? Hearing none, I'll entertain a motion to approve the changes as presented. There, actually, those are not changes. Those are just, I'm just highlighting what the pay current oh, okay. rate is. So there, there, any weren't, changes? there weren't any changes. Okay. So I'll entertain a motion to approve the substitute handbook as it's presented. So moved. Second. There's a motion and a second. Larry, would you pull the committee, please? Yes. 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 Motion passes. Thank you. The next item on the agenda is the approval of the Bartlett High School Student Handbook. 
I'm going to be asking our administrative team from Bartlett to talk about the changes for the Bartlett Handbook. Um, I do want to say that there's the, our handbooks have been translated. They were translated last year into multiple languages. And so we are going to translate any changes that get approved tonight and make sure that our families get them um, after they're approved. So before Assistant Principal Nieves and Dean Renald present to you some of the changes, I just want to add that we have worked diligently to make sure that our changes were both um, culturally responsive but also with a um, main focus on instructional changes and academics as we move forward. Thank you. So we made a lot of changes. These are the big ones. Um, we did a lot of editing and moving things. Um, but so the names and the titles were updated on the district information page. Uh, Mr. Collins's letter replaced Mr. Thomas's letter. We moved our PBIS rubric from page 10 to page 2. We updated the Title I compact and moved it from page 2 to 3. We moved our school wide rubrics. Um, that were norm originally on three to nine pages um, to the back in Appendix A. We cleaned up and listed notices and communication for the due process on page six. Um, we had a fairly large piece of that was duplicate of our um, program of studies, so we took that out, um, and so that way it's not um, said twice, so they can have the, both books. The conduct of student discipline groups have been changed from groups to levels and specific behaviors were redistributed to more appropriate categories on pages 12 to 15. We took out the groups A through H and made five levels and we've listed them from minor behaviors to major offenses in five different levels. Um, and we made the interventions and consequences more specific. The cheating and plagiarism consequences were clarified and restructured into the first and second offenses on page 16. Um, one of the first big changes that we did was the dress code. Um, it was changed almost in its entirety. Um, it's on page 17 in the book. And it now says, students must maintain a standard of decency in dress and appearance. All clothing must be worn in an appropriate manner that promotes a respectful and safe learning environment. Clothing must be of an appropriate length and fit, regardless of gender. Any headgear that covers the entire head and face is prohibited. This includes, but is not limited to, hats, hoods, ski masks, and sunglasses. Bandanas, bonnets, and hair wraps are not allowed. Tops must have straps that completely cover undergarments. Tank tops in which an undergarment is showing is not permitted. Tops with spaghetti straps, halter tops, and strapless tops are not permitted. No cleavage can be exposed. Students are required to wear shirts at all times. The shirts must cover the entirety of the abdomen. Shirts must have fabric in the front, back, and both sides with no space between the top and bottom. Abusive, suggestive, or profane language, symbols of illegal drugs or alcohol, direct or indirect sexual content, content that targets any group or subgroup in a negative manner, or any other words, symbols, or slogans that disrupt the learning environment may not be worn on clothing or jewelry. Shorts, skirts, and dresses must be no shorter than mid-thigh. Pants worn below the waist or showing clothing beneath the main outerwear is not permitted. Pants may not have holes above mid-thigh. Pajamas, pillows, and blankets are not permitted. And then anything not listed but deemed disruptive to the learning environment will be addressed individually by the staff. <laughs> um, electronic device policy. So we updated the examples. Um, so they were the devices that the kids use every day now and defined that personal electronic devices are not permitted in any class for any reason unless its use is specifically documented in that day's lesson plan. We also took out the teacher um, confiscation of the devices. Um, attendance guidelines on page 18. We updated and reorganized them into categories, um, further explaining what absent, truant, tardy to school, tardy to class, and dismissals are, um, and outlined specific groups, specific guidelines for each, and also listed 
pro the progression of consequences. Um, we updated our makeup policy on page 21. Um, sorry, the wording is. So we, we replaced reduced at the discretion of the teacher with determined by the type of absence. We deleted should the student submit verifiable documentation for the absence, medical note, dental note, et cetera, and added serious long-term illness makeup will follow the protocol listed under homebound instruction. The attendance policy, attendance policy for final exams on page 21, we just clarified the wording. We... Um, changed our student parking policy and made it more specific. It's on page 22. We replaced all automobiles parked on the school grounds must be registered with the principal's office with all automobiles must be registered within the first 10 days of school. Parking pass will cost $5 and this pass will be hanging, must be hanging from the rear view mirror at all times while on campus and also added a progression of consequences there. We just, we added in a section that said end of the school day procedure on page 23, um, where students are expected to exit school on the campus in an orderly and timely manner. Upon dismissal, all students are required to leave campus. Only bus riders are allowed to be in the bus lot. All students waiting for rides should report outside to the front of the building. Students remaining for after school activities should report to their assigned areas immediately. Um, we removed the section that for the senior privileges in regards to the directed studies as they don't we don't have the study halls anymore and the extracurricular activity section on page 27 was removed from the athletic section just so the students could clearly see the difference clearly see that it pertained to both subjects versus just the not just the athletic section um, we worked with IT over the summer and um, clarified the Chromebook policy within the building for when students um, either A, break or lose their Chromebooks and the process that they need to go through, um, as well as if they f continuously forget or come in with their Chromebooks uncharged. And um, together with IT, we came up with a policy after, that they're allowed so many two loaners per semester. Um, and then after that, it's paper or pencil. We don't have the loaners in the building to continuously give out or the chargers in the building to continuously give out. Um, I, I hear a notice we updated on page 73. The bell schedule is updated to the current year. School year calendar was updated to the current year. And then the family receipt of the handbook um, we just added in one more line to, to acknowledge that they received their Chromebook as well, or they have a Chromebook in their possession. That's it. Are there any questions? Mr. Chair? Ms. Ryan, more questions blessed. I have. Uh, the first one was, you said that any school has to be registered within the first 10 days of school. How would that work if someone gets their license during the school? So case by case basis, if a child does get their license through the year, they would follow the same protocol and procedure, which would be to come into the schoolhouse and register their vehicle at that time. Any student that's already at the age to drive and has um, you know, registration of a vehicle owned by their parents, I would um, make that assumption probably at this age, right? They would go ahead and put those on file so that we know what vehicles from a safety standard are here on our campus. So if someone turns 16 in October, for example, then their parents would follow the same protocols that we would follow. But all of our drivers as of right now who are 16 will have 10 days throughout the time that we run our advisory to purchase that um, pass so that we can keep track of what student vehicles are here on a daily basis. So if someone gets their license or is 16 and a half now and then gets a vehicle during the year, is that laid out in the handbook that they can do that? Um, it is. I mean, it is, okay. It is. And then the only other one I have is, why are we not allowing teachers to confiscate electronic devices if they're being utilized in the classroom? It's a liability issue? It is a liability issue. I'm hearing, you know, from my experiences, I know it's a liability issue, and I'm hearing here at Bartlett, it has been a liability issue as well. So in the practice that um, I'm well aware of, 
taking that phone, if we are then responsible as a school to replace a phone. If a teacher loses it, breaks it, it's gone, we're responsible as a school to replace that phone. We can't just confiscate it and then a parent calls us and we're not going to be willing to replace it. So what are we letting teachers do if someone... What's so then that it? becomes an administrative issue in the levels that um, Assistant Principal Nieves has read to you. The different levels varying one all the way through level five incidences. Incidents, excuse me, they are going to be categorized in our handbook that allow us to measure the consequences based on that. If someone's a repeat offender of using technology during teacher-led instruction, again, call back to what she stated with the new cell phone policy that if a teacher does not have that documented in their lesson plan as to why they're using it, then children are direct violation of the cell phone policy. There should be no cell phones out while the teacher is teaching at that time unless he, she, or they have documented that in a lesson plan, hey, I'm going to use cell phones this time at this place. Poll everywhere is a huge thing that teachers are using right now. It's just one example, and that might be the case. But to confiscate a phone, I don't know that we have the manpower and or the finances to replace phones and confiscate things that I'm being told have been issues of getting broken and or lost. Thank you. Just to jump in on that conversation a little bit, um, I, I'm curious about how that's going to go with the cell phones if no one's taking them away. So I think it would be very helpful to revisit that topic um, early on so that we can evaluate how that's going. Um, and I wonder about about the, sorry, go ahead, Ms. Davis. I, I was going to, we were going to say at the end also, we were going to ask since Mr. Collins is new and we've put in some of these things, if we could revisit at the end of quarter one with data on all of these new policies and bring it back to you if, to tweak any, I don't know, any of these pieces. What would that mean for students and families if we change the handbook partway through the year? I think it's a... It's a difficult situation to not use data that is previously in place um, from previous years here. But at the same time, I think that to make changes moving forward are vital. So I don't know, that is a tricky question and one that I think as a parent, I would want uh, to know that my child's school was going to monitor something and make changes in the middle of the year that met the needs of her and her classmates versus not making needs because we put something out in the beginning because it wasn't working. I think that, you know, either way, you're going to have groups of folks who question the process and the procedure. But I'll be honest, there's not a lot of data previous to me arriving here that tells me uh, what a good informed decision looks like mm -hmm. regarding um, dress code and cell phone policies and tardies. I will, I will say that all three of those things are pretty big for me right now but there is not a lot of data to support that. And so I want to look at what that um, brings us in the first few weeks. Um, I do know that one of the first things in speaking um, in terms of safety and Ms. Millette, you know, you brought safety up and that's a great concern of mine as well. And that one of those were um, surrounded students being in the parking lot quite a bit and what cars were out there. So that to me was first and foremost. So that is why you see the, um, the, procedure in place to kind of monitor how many cars are there and what we can do about that and then to work with our resource officer to kind of manage that. In terms of getting back to the cell phone policy, cell phone policies are tricky I think everywhere and that's difficult but I don't know, I'm being told in many of my one-on-ones with um, stakeholders since July that there wasn't a policy that was followed heavily so I want to be able to try to manage it from the jump, but I don't know how to do that without putting some restrictions in place and monitoring it with teachers. I know that I've heard from some teachers I don't mind when they use the phones. I like to, I like to use them in terms of technology, and then I don't have an issue. And then I've heard other people say I have an issue with kids pulling out cell phones. So I don't know until I get everybody here together that I can really do that. So I've engaged all the stakeholders that came to the table already but I haven't, gotten to, I haven't gotten to engage with all of them. So this is what we came up with as a, as a team. And I, when we took out the confiscation piece, that's the teachers asking to take them. So when we reach the fourth and the subsequent, doesn't mean that we won't take them. 
once we, the teachers hit their third and give that detention and notify the parents, the fourth one is the behavior referral to the administration. So we can build that in where it's in our steps to take it, but not in the teacher's hands to take mm -hmm. the whole thing. So um, we can clarify it there. Okay. Yeah, and it might be nice for the teachers to not be in that position of having to take it, but it may feel really powerless in the moment when students are continually redirected and there's really no, absolutely no consequence in the moment. That's, I think, where, where I think we're lacking. Well, and I'm glad you brought that up, actually, because there are staff members, again, who I said came to the table and engaged in conversation who said they're not comfortable asking a student to give the phone up because there were too many situations where the students didn't comply. So, you know, in, in looking at that too, I don't want to put staff in, 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 a, in harm's way of a situation that they're uncomfortable with, because when you have 50% that tell me that they're uncomfortable with it, but then 50% that tell me, oh, I have no problem asking for it. So that's kind of where I'm at right now in terms of taking this over, in terms of looking at what is best until I can engage with all staff members. But we are going to take phones, administratively speaking. But, you know, if a student is not going to comply with that, we have to look at that. So we can definitely revisit per your request and, um, you know, maybe even report back to you um, through Dr. Gogan's office even before the end of next week when we can engage with all stakeholders. And that is in our back to school to have this dialogue right here around those three big policies. Tardies, parking, and cell phone policy. So do you think it's better for us to keep the policy as it is and then change it if we need to, or you want to change it and then change it back if you need to? Um, as it is, no, we do not feel that it is, that it is any, any value add to keep it as it is. So we would either go with this with some tweaks in terms of what we pull and who's going to compensate phones and what that support system is going to look like for teachers that are uncomfortable, right? Um, versus what was there before. And I'll let them speak to what was there before. Again, I wasn't here. I, don't, I can't tell you only what I know. Right. Um, I will say, uh, as a teacher, it was difficult to confiscate the phones um, because many students didn't want to give that up. So that little disturbance or what we would deem as a little disturbance quickly progressed into a higher level disturbance within the classroom that kind of just set the room afire and trying to get everything back in order to continue your lesson was very difficult. So um, taking that piece out of the teacher's hands and if that situation warrants administrative intervention, um, I think that's, we agreed that we thought that was the easier way to go uh, with that, rather than putting those teachers in that kind of line of fire, I guess, yeah. so to speak. One other question I have is, are the, can we give the kids an agency? Mm -hmm. Is there full access? No. No, no it's there, there's um, Go, Guardian. What, Go Guardian and filters. Sorry. Sure, but then they could, they can just hook onto the internet from their phone. Can't they? Don't they? Can't they bypass the block after? Yeah, I didn't hear his original. I didn't hear. No, so I'm just so the the tablets that we give the kids have Chromebooks. They have blocks on them for certain internet pages and things along those lines. I'm assuming, but you can just share your internet from your phone at that point and just bypass that. Well, the system, the machine itself is is um, controlled by the district. So even students who are at home using a school issued device have blocks. Oh, so they can't connect. Can they connect to the internet from a different device? They can. Yeah. It still blocks. Yeah, even um, just from a parent perspective, during remote learning, if um, if my kids had too many tabs open, the teacher would close the tabs for them. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. <laughs> I don't know if that's unique to younger grades, but they they were pretty on point with that. Thank you. Through the chair. So the parking policy with regis I have two questions and comments. Um, the parking policy with uh, registering cars, that's new, correct? Paying the $5? What's the $5 funding? So it will go back to the student activities, the grade level that that child is on. Okay. And, you know, just regarding the dress code, I'm happy to hear that you're going to be taking data to 
see the effectiveness of the impl implementation. I do think that it's a little too strict and that it unjustly targets females. And what is wrong with hair wraps? So I, I don't know that anything is wrong with that. Um, that is just, those are things that we gather from teachers and from the folks here on the admin team that have worked here before that teachers have complained in the, in the past about the students coming with hair wraps um, and do rags. And so, you know, in hoods, anything that are, don't allow students to be identified in a safety situation. But you're open to revisiting whether, um, you know, a, a girl that wears a tank top with spaghetti straps, it's really necessary to be dress coded for that or disciplined for that. So you're going to be looking at data to determine if that's necessary. Data if it's necessary or data if students are dressed inappropriately for school? Both. Yes, I believe that we will, get, we will gather data on that and teachers will gather data if students are following dress code in their classroom. What data can they gather if someone shows up with a spaghetti strap shirt on under technical violation at that point? What's the, I guess, I just don't know if the data would be to clarify it. Well, I mean, we have to have a dress code, correct? Oh, I understand. We all no, agree into not... that. So I'm saying the data would be what students are breaking the dress code and what is appropriate. I don't know. I, I mean, every school is going to look different in terms of what dress code looks like. But midriff tops and spaghetti straps are not in every school I've ever worked at. I don't know about the rest of my colleagues. We haven't deemed those to be appropriate. I don't know. I guess I'm really, maybe I'm not understanding where you're coming from. And I don't want, again, as the father of a female student, I don't, you know, I, I personally did not see it as too strict. But I'm more than willing to come to the table. We're having a dialogue and most certainly will do so. Certainly. Thinking of tank tops for men also, maybe, male students and that type of thing? I mean, no, not, not, not that appropriate. specifically for that. Um, just, you know, allowing parents and children to have those discussions and, you know, so on. So I believe that it was in there before, and I'll ask the two of them in terms of what was in there around. It was similar. Tops. It was similar. I, I think for me, from a cultural perspective, the, the do-rags, the head wraps, those types of things um, probably unfairly target um, folks that identify as part of the global majority. So do-rags are not on here because that was discussed in the previous administration mm -hmm. to allow them. And teachers were comfortable with those from the PBIS. And I'll let Gina speak. The, the do-rags were here for that survey. They were removed. We had parent surveys, student surveys, and um, staff surveys. So that definitely that did come out at the end. What's a hair wrap? What's, what, what's, what's a hair wrap? Yeah. What's the difference? So it's like a bonnet, bonnet or hair wraps. Um, I guess um, night nightcaps. Is that also some a cultural thing? Could be. It could be. Could be. Yeah. So we can definitely revisit that. Yeah. Yeah, and, and, you know, I think that goes under, like, the hijab and things like that as well. Oh, I sure. just wouldn't want anyone to feel like they sure. couldn't express sure. their Certainly. culture. Certainly, we definitely discuss that. At we mean, when I think it's there, it is students coming in and saying to the teacher, you know, their, their heads are covered, and the teacher's like, hey, you need to remove, just like the young man says, I'm wearing a hat, and, this, and, and the female student has her hair tied up, pulled up and it becomes an issue. I think it's back to what you're saying about the female versus male issue. Is a male going to question, well, I can't wear a hat, but she can wrap her hair all the way up. Now, how is it any different? My hair's covered up. So I think that was the thing that kind of took us that direction. Again, we had a lot of dialogue about this. Um, and we looked at a lot of data that they gathered from the survey last year, but I don't have anything to go off of other than that. And that's, again, I think with the midriff and the, and the tank tops, that was all discussed in part of the dress code survey that they with PBIS. So that's why it says that. But we will, we will certainly have a dialogue. And I, I extend that table open to whoever so that we can look at what that is. Because again, I wouldn't, as, the, as a father of a female, want to appear to come off like that. So that I want to make sure that we are culture responsive. 
Thank you for that. And I think, right, when we see the data on maybe the number of dress code infractions Fraction. and then have to determine, is this really worth our time to be disciplining a child for wearing <coughs> a tank top with spaghetti straps or showing a little bit of midriff? Because it's just the style these days, really. I, I would just like to make a recommendation um, in terms of Oh, you know, one of our four buckets that I spoke about earlier um, with our sense of belonging, it's important for us to empower students to have some choice. I want to compliment your team for digging a little deeper, you know, to build a safe learning environment. You have to have some rules and regulations. I fully understand that kids need choice and parents need to be involved with their dressing. I do have one recommendation that's making me just a little uncomfortable, and it's the word hair wraps. I think that that could be interpreted as us telling someone that they cannot um, wear their hair wrap. I personally don't know the difference between a do-rag and a hair wrap, um, but I think a bonnet or a bandana or a, you know, a, a symbol of um, you know, inappropriate stuff is one thing, but uh, the, the hair wraps makes me a little uncomfortable. Um, so I, I would ask that we just remove hair wraps and, and again, collect data on what's going on. Um, we all know that um, these rules are to help promote a safe learning environment and give kids um, an idea of what's, what they should look like to come to school. Uh, they have to interact in a comfortable way and if you're wearing pants that are down to your knees you can't walk down the hallway. So I want to thank you for bringing this up. Um, I, we do have some issues and I agree with you, um, Mrs. Naparetta, that you have to be careful about picking your battles, right? Um, so student surveys would be a, a one recommendation from me and then just removing hair wraps in this first round of um, approvals and then we'll come back and we will have plenty of conversation and more data um, on this. I think it's important for Ms. Nieves to talk about the student surveys and the parents surveys as well. Um, we did do them. I think we have a total of 10 parents in our district that, that did respond to our multiple attempts to send out the survey results. Um, and then even the students, it was um, a select group. So I think it's how we're gonna get it out. I think we have to look at again how, how we would do it again if we wanna do it. Um, it's, it was multiple tries, so I think I'm racking my head, too, on different ways that we would have to get that information so out have, for those. We have gathered together this summer around what steps were taken before, and I think really it was around communication. So it's our goal um, through our advisory program with um, our teachers in the first 10 days to reach out to all parents, to engage with parents, as Dr. Gogan opened up the meeting earlier. That's going to be step one, and again, that's back to keeping data so that I can be able to report back what that looks like and did it increase us? Um, we hope so. We hope that it does increase that parents will come to the table and we'll be able to have those dialogues. And in terms of students, we're also going to target the advisory sections where they're with those teachers and utilizing that time to do surveys, truly engaging them at that time so that there is a teacher monitoring if the students are taking it so that hopefully we can get some really good data back and engage in these conversations with students, like what is appropriate and what is acceptable. Thank you, Mr. Collins. So just to summarize a couple of things, um, I'd be interested to hear the strategy for reaching parents. You talked a little bit about a strategy for uh, re engaging students in surveys. Um, parents seem to be a missing link there. So we really need a new strategy to get that survey out to people. Um, the cell phone piece, um, I would encourage you to consider putting something in there that says that cell phones may be confiscated if they're interfering with the learning environment, not removing that altogether. Um, it doesn't mean that the teachers need to be doing it, but if they need to pick up the phone and somebody on the administrative team needs to trot on over and take that phone that until the period's of, over, then... Probably, yes, definitely. Um, it, the, the cars piece, um, I wonder about saying something like, um, students need to register their vehicle with the office within 10 days of bringing that vehicle to school. That removes the question of whether it has to be at the beginning of the school year and kids can bring, excuse me, bring their vehicle in at any point during the year. Um, 
And then the last piece of feedback that I have is related to the dress code, which I think is very good. Um, all, all in all, I think the changes are very good. The um, uh, bullet point about abusive, suggestive, or profane language symbols of, I would say, drugs or alcohol, because there are some drugs that are not illegal that we still probably don't want on clothing. Um, but that's, that concludes my feedback. I think the only other thing I would add is, um, that five, sorry, that $5, um, I think it just should state where that money is actually going to in there so that no one can question that later on. Sure. Um, that way the person collecting it also has no liability of where they're putting that later on. Certainly, and that'll be um, done with Ms. Fifield, who actually holds all of the uh, class accounts. Thank you. Yep, thank you. Any other questions or comments from the committee? So we've given you some feedback, um, and we're, we're, I think we're looking for some, some adjustments here to this handbook. Um, what, is there a recommendation that we approve this with the feedback that we've provided? There's a lot of feedback there. I think we're going to have to, right, because these students are going to be getting these handbooks in a week. So right. There has to be something that's given to them. So I'd make a motion that we approve the handbook with the notion that those proposed edits be included prior to the start of school. Second. There's a motion and a second. Laurie, would you please pull the committee? Yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. 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 Motion passes. Thank you. Just for clarification, um, there are four edits that I wrote down. I just want to make sure that we all have them for clarity. Take out hair wraps. Uh, make sure that the... Um, the students, whenever they register and they go to the office and the $5 goes to student activities, take out illegal in front of drugs. I think that was a good catch, uh, Kelly. And was there anything else? Uh, the cell phone that they may be confiscated. Cell phones may be confiscated. And it's okay. <laughs> you can revisit when you review the... I just want to make sure I got them all in terms of looking at the, the female perspective, of course, because you brought that up, and I want to acknowledge that. Thank you. Again. Thank you, Mr. Collins and team. The next item on the agenda is the approval of the Webster Middle School Student Handbook. Good evening, Ms. Peterson. I'm going to have um, Mrs. Bergeron go through this, and then we'll answer questions together. Thank you. Good evening, Mrs. Bergeron. How are you? So the very first ones are just updating uh, the names and cover letters. Um, table of contents had to get shifted because with the PBIS expectations that were added, it took up more space. So those will be the expectations that the students are introduced to. Um, so we put them in the handbook. And then we updated the parent and guardian's responsibilities to add the class dojo information and power school information as that's what we use for, for communication um, to make it seamless so they know where to go and what they need to do. The next sections are the rules and expectation slides that we needed to add um, as PBI, PBIS will be rolling that out to the students and it's going to be seamless clarity for the parents and the students to see it twice. Um, the biggest one was updating the discipline policies to better align with the PBIS and the high school and how we categorize each of the discipline as a major or a minor um, for, for reporting serve, uh, purposes. And then the last one was we added the paragraph for the Chromebook. Uh, repair as we had several destroyed um, by malicious behaviors and how to how we're going to further go and speak to the guardians about getting the money back or working it off or working it out with each other. That was it. Are there any questions or comments from the committee? Hearing none, I'll entertain a motion to approve the Webster Middle School Student Handbook. So moved. Second. 
There's a motion and a second. Lori, would you pull the committee, please? Yes. 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 Motion passes. Thank you. The next item on the agenda is the approval of the Park Avenue Elementary School Student Handbook. Good evening, Ms. Thompson. Good evening. Um, most of our changes actually um, are updating dates for school-wide events, phone numbers, um, room assignments for new staff, um, our ever-changing updated staffing chart that will continue to be a, a work in progress until all of our new hires are indeed in place. We have added in um, to our lunchtime conduct the use of our voice levels that we do for hallway passing and that as students enter and exit the cafeteria during lunch. Um, in our suspension and due process section, there's an explanation of the progressive discipline that we use at Park Ave, um, also with the opportunity for students to have um, some restorative practices involved there um, where they have an opportunity to turn things around, issue apologies, and, and kind of make their situations right um, as part of our progressive discipline. Um, excuse me, the um, updated information and dates for our open house as well as our um, back up and running PTO at Park Ave, which we're delighted is happening, and our meeting schedule that has been proposed is in the handbook. Okay. Um, new dates for the report cards and trimester dates, and then our updated letter for the Asbestos and Hazardous Emergency Response Act. Thank you. Any questions or comments from the committee? Just one comment. Um, elementary students um, are a little easier to write a handbook for. <laughs> they are. <laughs> uh, you're so lucky. They're all thinking, you're so lucky. I was sitting there with yeah. <laughs> I, I was listening, saying, mm, yeah. I, I think I'm going to take uh, when in doubt, okay. take the cell phone. <laughs> uh, if there are no further questions, I'll entertain a motion to approve the Park Avenue Elementary School Student Handbook as presented. So moved. Second. There's a motion and a second. Lori, could you pull the committee? Yes. 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 Motion passes. Thank you, everyone, for all of the work that you've done on these handbooks. Uh, the next item on the agenda is the approval of the coaching handbook. I am, was not prepared for um, athletic director not to be here tonight, um, but in your school committee packet is the um, coach's handbook, but it is not fully complete. There is an additional letter that will be going home to um, all parents of athletes around uh, safety in locker rooms, and that was supposed to be included. And there are just a couple slight things in the handbook um, I certainly can't answer your questions about that I would like him to be here for, but the Webster Middle School needs to be included as well, and there are areas where it just references Bartlett High School athletes. So um, I, I think it's the school committee's um, decision to either approve it with the addition of the permission slip and the updates to include Webster Middle School or table it. What is the desire of the committee? Through the chair, when when does this this has to go out soon? Yes. I would propose making that we approve it subject to the proposed changes. Dr. Govan states that we can coaches get that handbook. Um, it does include the middle school at least um, at this time going out. Okay, is that a motion, Mr. Anopoulos? Yes. That'd be a motion to approve with those changes. Second. There's a motion and a second. Lori, would you please pull the committee? Second. Oh, yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. Yes. Motion passes with the um, edits as we talked about. 
Thank you. And the next item on the agenda is the approval of the custodian memorandum of agreement for 2022 to 2025. Thank you. Um, before I discuss that, I would like to release all of my administrators. Um, I want to thank you for your time here tonight. I know that tomorrow comes quick and early. So um, without further ado, you're more than welcome to stay, but I am granting you permission to go. And I will see you tomorrow in this room bright and early. <laughs> <laughs> um, thank you all. The uh, custodian's negotiations was um, a wonderful experience. Uh, Mrs. Naparati, you were on that committee. No, Mrs. Blythe, you were on that committee. And um, it was a one meeting um, event, which was very wonderful. Again, uh, our custodians are a great group of people and their uh, contract um, that we are proposing for you to ratify includes a 2.75 increase for year one, a 2.5 for year two, a 2.25 for year three, um, and we have added the addition of Juneteenth if it falls within or is celebrated during the work week. Thank you, Dr. Kogan. Any questions or comments from the committee? Well, thank you um, to all of you, including Ms. Blythe, for negotiating that contract, and I'll entertain a motion to approve it. So moved. Sec. There's a motion and a second. Lori, would you pull the committee, please? Yes. 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 Motion passes. Thanks again. And the next item on the agenda is the approval of the administrative assistance contract for 2022 to 2025. Thank you. And that was Mrs. Naparata. <laughs> That was a couple meetings, wasn't it? I know we only had the one. Okay, yeah, we, we had a couple happen. meetings. We did have a couple meetings, and again, I want to thank our administrative assistants for all their hard work. Um, these, this is a summary of the changes. There was a new salary scale that condensed their salary scale, um, and um, they also are getting a 2.75 in year one, a 2.5 in year two, a 2.25 in year three. We did add a new longevity step for those who have been here um, anywhere from five to nine years, and that is $300. The Chair, does their new contract include Juneteenth? Because I think this is the only one that hasn't referenced it directly. Uh, yeah, I think it does. Okay. And it's on the sheet it. right here. Okay. I just didn't add it in my summary. Okay. Just want to make sure. Thank yeah. You. Yes. Any other questions or comments from the committee? Hearing none, I'll entertain a motion to approve the um, administrative assistance contract for 2022 to 2025. So moved. Second. There's a motion and a second. Lori, would you pull the committee, please? Yes. 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 The next item on the agenda is the approval of the Webster Educators Association Memorandum of Agreement, the addition of two curriculum leader positions. Dr. Gogan. Thank you. Um, as you know, we have instructional leadership teams at each of our buildings. At the high school, they are uh, instructional leadership team members and also department heads. The way that the department heads work at the high school is they um, are responsible and get paid per person who's underneath them. A lot over the couple years, uh, departments have merged, and and um, Mr. Collins and Ms. Nieves and Mr. Rinald's work, they really took a look at who was responsible for who. We're really going to be taking uh, a much closer look at instructional practices, and so we have come up with two new um, curriculum leader positions, one being the career and technical head to really focus in on the innovative pathways. The business department would fall under that as well. Um, and then uh, special education sort of had um, special education staff, but also um, programs that weren't special education, like Quest is not just a special education program. So we know that we have an increasing L population and we have new positions. We have an academic interventionist, we have an academic coach, so we developed a new uh, student support service department head for those, um, for those people so that they could really work on things that um, are in their department, say. Um, so that came out of um, Mr. Collins and Ms. Nieves' work. The union and I and uh, the admin team met, and they are in agreement. They ratified that, so it is in front of you for a memorandum of agreement for this year. Thank you for that summary, Dr. Grogan. Yes. Any questions or comments from the committee? Through the chair. Ms. Do you have any evaluative duties 
or provide any input? To they provide input. So uh, we are actually um, really trying to engage our instructional leadership team to be leaders, um, to be really in the classrooms, uh, at spe in, particularly at the high school. They have an extra block if you're an instructional leader. So um, under the leadership of Mr. Collins, they'll be using that block to help support and get into classrooms, not just doing learning walks on themselves, but really helping coaching teachers with best practices. That peer-to-peer -peer relationship is where change happens. It's much more effective than having a consultant come in to evaluate you. There's no evaluative roles with instructional leadership members, but they're going to be going into classrooms and helping um, teachers with looking at data, with what's uh, an effective practice. Um, so no, they don't do it in an evaluative way. Are school-based IL teams made up of department heads? Yes, they're the same person. So if you're an ILT member, you're a department head leader. Um, at the middle school, you're a content leader. Um, if you're at the elementary school, you're a grade level leader. But you are the instructional leadership team. Okay. So we're trying to build that distributive leadership model. Um, it wasn't making sense for, I think business might have been in the English department. So breaking these up into more layered you know, the, the career and technical education department is going to be really talking a lot about hands-on learning, project-based learning, um, and looking at the data and looking at how to improve their lessons. The student support services are really going to be looking at are we really meeting the needs of our students, whether that's the dropout recovery program or whether that's the L programming. Do we have what we need? Um, and that's different than an English department meeting and looking at just English and what are our common assessments and or um, the PE department. So um, this is a trial for this year. I believe this is one year. Yes. Thanks. Any other questions or comments? No? Hearing none, I'll entertain a motion to approve the Webster Educators Association Memorandum of Agreement, the addition of two curriculum leader positions. So moved. Second. There's a motion and a second. Laurie, would you pull the committee, please? Yes. 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 Yeah. Yes. Motion passes. Thank you. Thank you. The next item on the agenda is the acceptance of a donation, three four by four adjustable tables from the Staple family to Webster Middle School. Just want to give a shout out to people who continually donate here. Thank you to the Staple family. <coughs> Excellent. I'll entertain a motion to approve um, that donation. So moved. Second. There's a motion and a second. Lori, would you pull the committee, please? Yes. Member Yes. What? Yes. 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 Yes, motion passes. And uh, on behalf of the committee, thank you to the Staple family for your donation. The next item on the agenda is the acceptance of a donation of five $10 gift cards from Price Chopper to the Webster Public Schools Summer Meals Program. Again, another wonderful donation that came through our summer school. We want to thank um, Price Chopper for that. The, I think these gift cards were given out at the Summer Eats um, table. Correct. Correct. The families in need use some additional support, um, we want to thank them. Great. Thank you. Any questions or comments from the committee? I'll entertain a motion to accept the donation. So moved. Second. There's a motion and a second. Laurie, would you pull the committee, please? Yes. 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 Motion passes. Thank you to Price Chopper for their generous donation. Mrs. Siddiqui, can I just ask um, the school committee to go back to, to the discussion about the two additional um, curriculum lead positions? I just want it for clarity and for um, the notes. The funds for those two additional people, two additional roles are going to come from ESSER. Mm -hmm. And I would ask that the school committee support that that's going to come from ESSER, just for clarity. Okay. Would you like a motion on that? Yeah, I think okay. so. So um, just to recap, we're mm -hmm. looking for a motion to approve um, the Webster Educators Association, the, the MOA, basically, for the two curriculum leader positions with the knowledge that those are being funded by ESSER funds. Thank you. Sure. So moved. Second. There's a motion and a second. Lori, would you please pull the committee again? Yes. Yes. 
Yes. Yes. Yes. Thank you. And thank you for that clarification, Dr. Gogan. Uh, the next item on the agenda is the approval of the fundraising organization, Park Avenue Elementary PTO. I am so excited this year that we have an active, very full, and very engaged uh, parent-teacher organization. Um, and so they have filled out the appropriate forms because there is a fundraising policy. This is step one to become an um, approved by the school committee to be a fundraising organization. And they have a whole bunch of activities already planned. So I'm very thrilled, um, but this is step one. Excellent. Are there any questions or comments from the committee? Hearing none, I'll entertain a motion to approve uh, Park Avenue Elementary School PTO as a fundraising organization. So moved. Second. There's a motion and a second. Lori, would you pull the committee? Yes. 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 Motion passes. And thank you to the Park Avenue PTO for uh, their reboot. Mm -hmm. You know, our, our kids really need, um, you know, all the funding that is provided by those fundraisers. So I'm, I'm looking forward to the activities and all the events that are going to be going on. Uh, the next item on the agenda is the discussion mm -hmm. and vote to add two additional members to the school building committee. Mrs. Prangeli? So at our last um, building, actually it was two meetings ago, I believe, we discussed um, this, uh, since the project is now getting a bit more active, there is a little more interest out in the community to um, participate on the building committee. The building committee was created by the school committee. Um, so it was recommended that we come to the school committee and ask the school committee if they are open to adding two additional voting members to the building committee. There are currently seven, um, so we need uh, four as a quorum. We like to keep that number odd. We don't want to make it one where we ever have to have a tie vote. So uh, the request would be increasing it to nine, which would mean we have a minimum of five to make a quorum at the building committee meeting. Um, this would allow us to open it up um, to any letters for, from community members. Um, right now, the voting members are all Webster residents, um, and it will continue to be that way. We feel that um, this is a Webster project, it's a Bartlett project, it affects the taxpayers of Webster, mm -hmm. so uh, the people making decisions are the taxpayers in Webster. Excellent. Thank you for clarifying the reason behind that. Um, are there any questions or comments from the committee? Through the chair. Hi, Brada. So how will it be maybe advertised, is, if that's the right word, for mm -hmm. these additional members. Yeah, I can post it on the website, put something out, and we could probably put something in the um, Smart Shopper, you know, saying that we have two additional seats. If anybody's interested, please send a, a letter in, and we can go from there. And then the existing board would review the letters and determine it. Correct. There are specific fields that um, the seats are that would be available. So they are community members. We can add and change. Um, but one of the seats um, that are required by the MSBA, uh, you have to have certain representation from the town. You have to have a selectman. You have to have a school committee representation. One of them would be um, somebody knowledgeable in construction. Last time, we had a difficult time filling that. Uh, somebody who understands what it is to be in the construction field and some of the regulations. Um, there was no interest last time. So what we did was we appointed the buildings, building inspector at that time to fill that role because we couldn't fill it. Um, building inspector is going to be involved no matter what because he's reviewing the plans. He's, he's involved. So he's part of the project. So it would be taking him out of his role and then opening up two more voting seats. So we would fill that one and then add another to keep it off. That's how that would work. So really, um, he would be kind of stepping down, and we would fill his role with that. We would hope to get somebody from the community with that skill set. And then the additional member could be, um, it, it could be if we don't get anybody, it could be the town accountant because it's a Webster resident or another member. Great question. Any other questions? Hearing none, I'll entertain a motion to uh, add two additional members to the school building committee. 
So moved. Second. There's a motion and a second. Lori, would you please pull the committee? Yes. 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 Motion passes. Thank you. And the next item on the agenda is a review transfer signing of warrants, bills, payroll, and vouchers. Um, there is a, a request for an approval for a transfer. And the transfer is $8,310.05 from uh, the Webster Student Activity. And that is not in your notes. I apologize for that. Okay. So I will entertain a motion to approve the transfer of $8,310.05 from the Webster, School, Webster Middle School Student Activity Savings Account to the checking account. So moved. Back. There's a motion and a second. Larry, would you please pull the committee? Yes. 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 Motion passes. Lori, <laughs> do you have the things for Kelly this time? There are two warrants here for you.
I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. There's a motion and a second. Lori, would you please pull the committee? Yes. 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 Meeting adjourned. Good night, everyone.